welcome to this permanent first edition of Making an Impact YouTube Style. I am your host, Simply Sensational Billy James. You should know me by now. Um, the Mayor Nation uh, website on WordPress.com, we're no longer posting there. Uh, we decided we would take the wrestling debate and turn it into a live uh, blog talk radio show that airs every Tuesday at uh, 9 p.m., uh, excuse me, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. Uh, so, I've been a passionate fan of TNA for the past five, uh, four uh, years, or th uh, well, I've been a TNA fan for a long time, but I've been really passionate for it, uh, uh, with it for the past uh, four years going, uh, so... It really was redundant for me to put a written review up uh, on the site. It was the only thing new that was being posted. So we decided to close the site now, but I did not want to end making an impact. So I decided to turn it into a YouTube show. So that's why it's being done this way. Uh, I want to apologize for it being posted on a Friday. I had planned on uh, posting it Thursday night, but I ran into some technical issues. Uh, so, uh, so I wanted to first apologize about that. So, uh, this past Wednesday's, uh, we, uh, Impact Wrestling's moved to Wednesdays, and it's going to be a permanent thing, and we'll talk a little more at the end of the show about TNA and its current situation. So, let's get started, and let's just jump into things uh, right now, so uh, let's just jump right into it. Very first match of the night was the Stairway to Jazz match between Bram and Abyss. Okay, the, basically it's a liar match with Jazz hanging above the ring. Holy crap! Was these guys freaking phenomenal? And let me just say this about Bram: he is one tough son of a bitch. He took some hellacious spots during this match. Um, they started going at trade blows in, in the ring and then took to the outside of the ring. Uh, at one point, uh, Abyss rammed uh, Bram into the still stairs. And I thought he busted his head open because he was bleeding. Uh, later in the match, uh, uh, Bram took some trash cans with some hellish shots to Abyss. Uh, Bram had tried to go up the ladder to get... Janice, but uh, Abyss knocked him off the ladder and belly to belly suplexed him into a, a board, a, a bob wire board, and it was like whoa, and it, it left some cuts on Bram's back because he was uh, bleeding in several spots on his back. Uh, before that, uh, Abyss had brought in the thumbtacks and poured the thumbtacks on the ring. Well. Uh, Bram returned a favor and was able to toss uh, Abyss into a, a, the other uh, barbed wire board that Abyss had set up in the ring. Uh, another hellacious spot was Abyss choke, uh, choke slamming. Uh, well, actually, before that, Bram had actually made it to the top, grabbed Janice, but before he could use Janice, Abyss choked, uh, black hole slammed him into the thumbtacks. And this is the second time that Bram has had this happen to him. I mean, he was covered. He had the tacks in his back, covered the, his trunks, his knee pads. I mean, that had to hurt. It had to hurt. Anyway, uh, Abyss looked like he was going to use Janice on Bram. Bram low blows. Abyss gets Janice back and gets the win. I was surprised. Bram goes over Abyss. This is the second time in a hardcore type match that uh, Bram has gone over Abyss. You know, they had previously faced each other in a Monster Balls match, which Bram won. So, where are they going with this feud? I don't know. Is it over? I don't know. Um, it's kind of funny that Abyss has been jobbing to uh, Bram. But like I said, Bram is one tough son of a bitch. He's took in these hellacious spots, and these matches are brutal. They're physically brutal. 
So I give Bram props for uh, his performance in this match, and it'd be interesting to see where Bram is going to go from here. So uh, great way to kick off Impact Wrestling in my mind, in my mind for Hardcore Justice. So you know, great match. If you missed it, you guys got to go and watch it. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch it. Um, we had Ethan Carter III come down to the ring. He came down with Rhino and Rockstar Spud talking about his time in, in jail because last week um, Kurt Angle had him arrested and hauled off to jail. So, he comes out and talks about how he had a moment of clarity and those who caused uh, the suffering of his Aunt Dixie putting him through a table, Bully Ray and others will pay. But he said in jail he had a moment of clarity and he turns and looks at uh, Rhino and blames him for their loss at, you know, the uh, pr uh, two weeks ago where uh, t to uh, Team Bully. So he Jack Jaws with him back and forth and he slaps Rhino. They start duking it out, going at it, and then they get to the out in the outside of the ring and then EC3 gets the upper hand by throwing... Uh, Rhino into the guardrails and continues to beat down, throws him back in the ring and is just totally beating the shit out of him. And Rockstar Spud is trying to break him up, but um, EC3 tells him, get back or you're next. And, I mean, EC3 really was br uh, brutally tore him up. So I guess now EC3 is going to feud with Rhino. Uh, interesting, I have to give it that. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, I like EC3. He's done great things with the character. And you know what? Give TNA credit. They could have at any time put a title on him, but they haven't. So that's the interesting thing to his character. Uh, I could do without Rockstar Spud. Rockstar Spud sucks, okay? It's almost as bad as having Dixie Carter on air, but it's a close call. And the outfit he was wearing... Uh, you know, I'm not going to make my comment because I, you know, I respect all people and I don't want to offend anybody with the comment, but let's just say it wasn't, he shouldn't have been wearing that kind of outfit. Actually, he shouldn't be even on our TV screens. That's all I got to say about that. When are we going to see a match between Rhino and EC3? We'll probably see one in a couple of weeks. But it's going to be interesting to see. It was an all right segment. I like the aggressiveness of EC3, but you know, was it like anything exciting? If you missed it, not a big deal. Uh, but it looks like that's where Teenage going. Uh, EC3 versus Rhino. So it's going to be interesting to see. We had Samoa Joe versus Loki for the TNA X Division title. Loki became the number one contender last week by winning the X Division Scramble match. Oh, this match was good. They traded blows. Um, Loki was getting several chops on, uh, so on Joe, where J Joe's ch uh, chest was red. Uh, Joe was taking him out with some boots and uh, hard kicks. Uh, there was one point where Joe, uh, in the middle of the match, Joe went for the muscle buster. Uh, Loki was able to counter it and hit a double stump on the, Joe's back, having him draped over the middle rope. That was like, whoo! Um, so Loki uh, got a little offense, but Joe came back, and Joe came back with a flurry. He got Loki into a variation of the Boston Crab. I mean, it was a bent... One. He looked like he had him, it was going to break him. It was that, had him bend backwards that far back. And then he translates it into an STF, which was like, holy shit. But um, Loki was able to make it to the ropes. Um, Loki was able to come back. He got some offense in, uh, even match back and forth until Joe hit the muscle buster to get the one, two, three, and to retain the X Division title. 
Uh, you know, Loki, probably one of the, uh, uh, one of the best X-Division stars in the history of TNA. Samoa Joe, one of the most dominating X-Division stars. Uh, Joe uh, literally personifies the meaning uh, no limits. And it's awesome to see these type of matches. This is what the X Division needs. You know, we've been bitching and complaining about the X Division because it's one of the key things that made TNA great. And it looks like they're trying to get back to that. They need to bring in some more X Division stars. And, uh, you know, I have no problem with Tiger, uh, Tiger Uno. Uh, don't have no problem with Manic. Crazy Steve is just not doing it for me. He's got to go. But... This match, it was smart. Loki was the right guy to put up against Joe. They had one great, awesome match. Loki looked awesome in this match, and it made Joe look more, you know, good. And it was nice to see it wasn't a squash match. Joe had some dominating moments, but so did uh, Loki. And, wow, it was just, it was a great match. I don't know what more to say. It was so fast-paced. It's hard to keep up with the action because they were just going so fast, and you know they're two of the legit you know strike guys in the in the in the business. You know, they they have both devastating finishing moves. The Kia Clush uh, Crusher, I uh, believe that's how it's pronounced, but I could be wrong. And of course, the Buster Muscle Buster and the cle uh, the uh, rear naked choke for uh, Joe. Uh, how long is Joe going to hold the X Division title? That's a million dollar question. And who's going to be able to take it away from Joe? That's another million dollar question right there. But nevertheless, like I said, you really got to go and watch this match. It was awesome. Believe me, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, it's Mojo versus Loki. And, you know, it, uh, it, it was another great match. So they were on a roll and, and such with TNA. So go and check that match out. Okay, guys? We had a I Quit match, Mr. Anderson versus Samuel Shaw. This was an okay match, in my opinion. It wasn't a great match, but it wasn't a bad match. Uh, match started out with Shaw in control, uh, came out blindsided. Uh, Anderson at one point had a cord around uh, Anderson choking him. Uh, several times he tried to make Anderson say, I, uh, say, I quit. Anderson says, you quit. Uh, then he started hitting him with several cross face blows and would go back and forth. At one point, he tried to put him in a camel clutch type move, the uh, Devil's Triangle. Uh, the first attempt, Anderson was able to block it. Second attempt, he couldn't. Um, and still, he refused the, uh, to quit. And um, so, he was uh, Anderson was able to come back. And the key mistake in this match was Shaw went for a, a you know, um, a, sh a shoulder block in the ring corner where Anderson was. Anderson uh, dodged it. Uh, Shaw goes uh, shoulder first into the ring post. Anderson takes a full advantage of it, hitting a fly arm bar, and then he puts it into a tight, full arm bar. Uh, the whole time he's screaming uh, uh, for him to uh, say I quit. Shaw says no. Anderson says yes. It starts a yes chant. Why people love to do the yes chant? Could it be because of a guy in the WWE named Daniel Bryan? Could be. But anyway, during this whole time, uh, Gunner came out and was watching the match. At this point, Gunner's really concerned for... Uh, uh, Samuel Shaw and he gets up on the apron and is coming into the ring right as Shaw says I quit finally gives up Okay, the interesting thing at the end of this match was the stare down between Anderson and Gunner and there was a little trash talking from Anderson and we couldn't hear it because the mics weren't picking it up so it looks like they're going to go with a feud Anderson versus Gunner uh, when is it going to happen? I don't know. But here's the million-dollar question. And I think teenage dropped the ball on this. And, you know, 
and I could be wrong and they may not drop the ball, but the thing I think they're forgetting about is what about the Feast of Fire briefcase that Gunner has possession of for a Team A tag team title shot? Have they totally forgotten about it? And if not, when's he going to use it and who's he going to pick as his partner? Is it going to be Samuel Shaw? Who knows? And could it be Samuel Shaw turns heel and joins forces with Anderson? Anderson turns he- heel? Or does Gunner turn heel? Million ways they could go with this. I have no clue, but as far as the match itself, it was average. If you missed it, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. You know, all you need to know, Anderson won, forced Samuel Shaw to say, I quit. I have to give Shaw credit. He's done he's done good things with this gimmick. It's interesting. And he's really trying. So, you know, this is one of the few instances where uh, teenage is trying to make a star, their own original star. So, it's a work in progress. So, we'll just keep an eye on it. You know what I'm saying? We had the Hardys come out to the ring, and they were talking about how they got back together. It was not on a whim. This was preordained and planned that they want to prove that they are the best team, not arguably one of the best teams, but the best tag team. And they make it clear what they want. They want, I'm sorry about that, had itch. They want the TNA tag team titles. Bully Ray, Devon come out, Team 3D. And of course, uh, Bully grabs the mic and says, do you know who I am? And he goes on to say, I'm the person who put Dixie Carter through a table. And then they talk about being inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, which Team 3D will be inducted at Bound for Glory. Uh, Bully and Devon pretty much indicate, would it be nice to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and be the tag team champions? And uh, so they go back and forth and they say, you want to be the tag team champions. We want to be the tag team champions. So they call the Wolves down to the ring. The Wolves come down to the ring and basically say, hey, you guys want a title shot? You got it. Anytime, any place, anywhere. So later in the show, Kurt Angle announces that they will, we will have a tag team title tournament between, between the three teams where they will each wrestle, uh, one, uh, will have one match, the winners of that match will pick the stipulation for the next match, and the team that gets two wins become either retain or become the new uh, become the TNA Tag Team Champions. I'm, we know it's all taped, so pretty much we know what's going to happen, but I think these are still going to be great matches. They're going to be worth watching. Uh, we've seen what the Hardys and the Wolves can do. We saw what Team 3D and the Hardys can do. So it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. The one thing that would be interesting is seeing the Wolves take on Team 3D because we haven't seen that. And that, to me, would be a great matchup. Uh, i like to see the Hardys versus the Wolves again. Um, give them 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. They're going to tear the house down. Uh, but, you know... And one thing that Bully said that was a mistake on his part, he said that, uh, that uh, Jeff and Matt wanted to regain the, the uh, TNA Tag Team titles. Matt and Jeff have never had held the TNA Tag Team titles in their career as a tag team together. And as a matter of fact, I'm sorry, still got an itch. Uh, I got it took care of now. Um, and even in their single careers in TNA, they've never held, held the tag team titles with another partner. So that was a mistake on Bully's part. So, if if the Hardys were to win the tag team titles, they could arguably say they're one of the greatest tag teams. Uh, arguably, right now, uh, Team 3D uh, has won it all, done it all in the tag teams. Uh, they've held the WCW tag team titles, the NWA tag team titles, the ECW tag team titles, and we're talking about the original ECW. The WWE uh, tag team titles, the World tag team titles, uh, the TNA tag team titles, the IWGP tag team titles. I mean, they've done it all and won it all. I mean, they they uh, it's when it comes to the tag team championship gold, they are the most prestigious tag team to held gold. 
So, with that being said, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this little tournament type uh, situation between Team 3D, the Hardys, and the Wolves. It's going to be awesome to watch. Even though we kind of know who's going to win, it's still going to be freaking awesome, and I'm looking forward to it. And I think the first set of matches are going to kick off next week, and it's going to be very interesting to watch. We had a uh, TNA Knockouts last Knockout Standing match for the Knockouts Championship uh, last week after the uh, four-way match between Gail Kim, Taryn Terrell, Angelina Love, and Velvet Sky. Angelina Love attacked Gail in the back. Gail went to uh, Curry Angle and demanded a uh, match between uh, her and Angelina Love. She would put the title on the line. What a match. They really tore into each other. Um, they traded blows in and out of the ring. There was uh, one point that uh, Angelina had uh, set, uh, was going to try to suplex uh, uh, Gail off of the ring apron, and Gail was able to block it and somehow transcend it into the figure four leg lock around the ring floats, which was kind of cool. Uh, there was times that Velvet Sky tried to interfere uh, but she was at one point successfully able to nail uh, Gail with a uh, cookie tray. Uh, a lot of fighting outside the ring. They were nailing each other with the steel steps, guardrails, uh, a steel chair came into play. Uh, there was this awesome spot where Gail was going after uh, Angelina Love on uh, the entrance ramp. Gail had the steel chair in her hand and was preparing to hit uh, Angelie Love, but Angelie Love came back with the Botox injection right with the, into the steel chair, nailing Gail in the face with the steel chair. It was like brutal. I mean, it was like, whoa. You know, and what was so cool is when this when that spot happened, the fans were chanting, better than divas, better than divas, which was kind of cool. Um, you know, after that, they went, uh, you know, Gail and Angel, uh, Angel uh, I mean, Velvet and Angelina was trying to set up a double move to take out uh, Gail, but Gail was able to block it. And she was able to power out. She took Ange uh, took uh, Velvet out of the equation, and she hit this, like, suplex-type move off of the top rope, in, you know, taking Gail into the steel chair. But it looked more to me like a power slam-type move, but, you know, either way or there. But nevertheless... Gail hits this move, uh, nailing uh, Angelina into the steel chair, and Earl Helpner, who was the referee, counts uh, the ten count. Uh, and Angelina, uh, excuse me, Gail Kim wins the last knockout standing match and retains the TNA Knockouts title. Now, uh, uh, it's pretty much, uh, well. We know it's confirmed that Jessica Havoc will make a debut in TNA. She'll be simply going by Havoc, but. Uh, I look for her and Gail Kim to feud and, uh, over the title. And will Havoc get the title? I, I'd say she will win. I don't know. Probably bow for glory, but who knows. Where does this leave Angelina Love and Velvet Sky? That's a million dollar question. Are they going to break them up? They teased it last week. Or will they stay at a team and feud with someone else? Where is that going to go? Um... And what's with the other? What's going to happen with the other knockouts? Uh, you know, we haven't seen what Brittany's doing in a while in Madison Rain. Uh, where's Brooke Tesmacher at? Okay, where's my Brooke at? All right, I want. We want Brooke. We want Brooke. Okay. Uh, well, maybe it's just me. Okay, and of course Terry Terrell made her return. What's going to happen with her? Uh, million dollar questions. I don't have the answers. We're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, back to this match, it was just purely fantastic. You have to go and watch this match. Uh, this is why I love TNA. Knockouts are one of the best women's division on TV today. And it's like you're never going to be disappointed watching a knockouts match because very rarely do you see a terrible knockouts match. This was freaking awesome. And Gail Kim and Angelina Love proved why the knockouts are best in national t uh, wrestling TV today. So you 
I, you gotta go and watch this match. I'm telling you, you gotta watch it. Main event was Six Side Skill, Bobby Roode versus the Cowboy James Storm versus Austin Aries versus Eric Young versus Magnus versus Gunner. The winner becomes the number one contender to Bobby Lashley's TNA World Heavyweight title. Um, before the match happened, uh, MVP, King King, and Bobby Lashley came out. Uh, MVP did all the talking, did trash, talk about how Lashley dominated over uh, Eric Young to win the title and, and uh, defeated him in a rematch. How he dominated over uh, Austin Aries and Jeff Hardy and talked about how it doesn't matter who wins the six side steel match, they've already lost because Bobby Lashley's the most dominating champion and nobody's going to beat him. Uh, a good little promo. I thought it was best for MVP to be doing the talking because in the instance similar like Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar is not the best talker in the world and neither is Lashley. So having a mouthpiece like MVP was good and it worked. Okay, to the match, uh, to the six size steel match, it was pretty damn awesome. There were some nice spots in this match. One spot was saw Bobby Roode getting a... Uh, the Fuji armbar on uh, the Cowboy James Storm, while Eric Young got Magnus into the sharpshooter, and Austin Aries got Gunner into the last chancy, chancery. They had all these submission moves hooked in, and of course in this match it was escape the cage. There was no pinfalls or submissions, so Aries is looking around. He tries to go for to get out the steel cage. And, of course, he does it. But it's a back-and-forth match. It's pretty damn awesome to watch. A lot of nice, sweet moves. Uh, there was some uh, storm hit, this really super kick on the, uh, Eric Young and knocked him out for a few minutes. And he also knocked out Gunner with a running kick. Uh, there was another spot where we saw Twin Tower of Doom. Eric Young took out, uh, I want to say... Uh, style power bomb. I'm trying to remember who they hooked up, but uh, I want to say that uh, Rude had Storm and uh, Gunner, while uh, Ares had uh, Magnus and Ares taking them out. So now at this point, it leaves Bobby Rude and Eric Young standing up, and they each go on the opposite side, climbing into the cage. They look back at each other and realize, oh shit, they're trying. You know, he's trying to get out of the ring. So they race, and it's a race to see who hits the floor. And they hit the floor. Uh, one referee says Eric Young won. The other referee says Bobby Roode won. And they argue back and forth. And we're left as Air Pack wrestling go off the air, wondering who is the number one contender? Is it Eric Young or is it Bobby Roode? Well, anyway, this. Uh, this upcoming Wednesday on Impact Wrestling, Eric, uh, Curry Angle is supposed to announce who is the number one contender. I look for him to maybe do a match between uh, Eric Young and Bobby Roode, or they're both the number one contender and we get a triple threat match. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do with that. Um, you know, it, uh, a triple threat match may work because it's a way to... Uh, you know, to put the title on, say, Bobby Roode without making Bobby Lashley look weak. But I kind of think it would cheap, uh, cheapify the, if, uh, cheap, uh, make Roode's win a little cheap because I think it would have more mean Roode beat Lashley. But which direction is TNA going to go, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see. But still, if you didn't get to see this match, definitely you won't watch this match. Gotta watch it. It was awesome. Okay, guys. So, okay, we're gonna wrap up the show. Uh, I, uh, one other thing I want to say is they did a segment with uh, Dixie Carter. She talked about going through the table. She talked about how she is gonna step away from uh, TV. She's gonna co concentrate on things behind the scenes. But you haven't seen the last of her. And you know, the Carters always uh, get their revenge. So. We're going to see what happens with that. For right now, we're not going to see Dixie Carter on TV, which is a good thing. It had enough of her character. It's overexposed. It needs to go away, and she's realized that, hopefully, and 
hopefully she'll stay off TV for quite a long time. Okay, I want to talk about two key things for TNA right now. One is it was announced that TNA has come to an agreement for an extension. They are going to air on Spike TV Wednesdays at 9 Eastern, 8 Central to the end of the year. So they are not going off the air in October. They got uh, 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 at the end of September. So they got a three month extension. It's better than nothing. It's still not good news. They need a full TV deal, but at least it gets them, you know, a little more on the air. At least, you know, a little survival. Breathing room. I hope they can do it. I love TNA. I have been the five house show. Five house shows. And I'm just going to give you a little sample of some of the people that I've met at these house shows over the past five house shows I went to in the past four years, starting in 2011. Okay, this first one, the, probably one of the best knockouts at the time, in my opinion, the Salsa Mama herself, Sarita. This was the only time I got to see her wrestle live, and it was just a great thing to see. Awesome. I was tickled pink to get to see her. Um, also, I got to meet the hardcore legend himself, Mick Foley. Mick Foley, cool dude, very approachable, very nice. Awesome to get to meet him. I, I mean, if you've got a bucket list of wrestlers you want to meet, Mick Foley has got to be on your list, okay? So now, uh, the second house show I went to, uh, Austin Aries was on the card. Uh, you had uh, probably the world's greatest tag team. Uh, you had uh, the uh, the world uh, the tag team champions of the world, or however you want to call it, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian. Got to meet them. That was super cool. I'm telling you. I mean, can't beat that. So, and you know, I got to see Gail Kim and Matt Rain. Uh, the third house show I went to, and it was in that same year, but this time it was in Knoxville, Tennessee. The first two shows I went to were in Pensacola, Florida. I got to meet the phenomenal AJ Styles. And I told him, that, uh, now I can kick you off my bucket list. And, of course, I got to meet the uh, the beautiful and awesome uh, uh, Brooke Tesmacher, uh who hit the Aztastic on uh, Madison Rain, got a nice shot of that. So, uh, matter of fact, you see it right there. Okay, um, now, moving on uh, to last year, 2013, uh, was another house show in Pensacola, Florida. Once again, I got to meet AJ uh, Styles. Uh, 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 Chris Saban, who was at the time the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Jeff Hardy. I'm sure he's on people's bucket list. And, of course, Velvet Sky, just to name a few. Uh, this past year in uh, January, I went to another house show. Uh, who did I get to meet this time? Gail Kim. Madison Rain. EC3, Bully Ray, Bobby Roode, Samoa Joe, and the greatest man to ever live, Austin Aries. So, I am super psyched that TNA is at least going to be around a little longer. I don't want to see him go under. Uh, I've had the most best experiences going to, to a TNA house shows. I've never been disappointed. I've always had a great time and I've always left uh, uh, with full of high energy leaving from these shows. So if you have never been to a TNA house show, you really need to go. Forget about what you see on TV, the bad raps. you got to go and see them because they put on some awesome shows. Okay? Also, it appears that uh, ODB is gone from TNA. Uh, her uh, uh, her profile on the t on the Impact Wrestling uh, roster page on the website has been moved to the alumni section, and her profile on the teen on the Knockouts website has been totally removed. I know my good buddy John P. Mayer is totally devastated by uh, ODB's departure, but John, look at it on the bright side. She might be heading your way to Pro Wrestling Syndicate, so. Uh, 
uh, you need to keep your eye out for her. You know what I'm saying? Turn that frown into a smile. But seriously, OGB, you know, she was different, unique. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, she just, you know, was one of those she did push, but it wasn't, they didn't push her far enough. So, it'd be interesting to see if we'll see ODB back in TNA, but it looks like for the uh, immediate term, she's gone. So, all right, that's it for this uh, week's uh, Making an Impact uh, YouTube show, and we'll be back next week with another review. Hey, don't forget, Wrestling Debate is now live on Tuesdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, Block Talk Radio, the Nerd Port Network. God, check it out. Also, don't forget to check out the other shows on the uh, Nerdport Network on Blog Talk Radio. And it also includes John's independent point of view. It's always Wednesday's nights, and I believe the time is 9 Eastern, 8 Central. But don't hold me to that. Uh, so, anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, uh, and, hey, thanks for you guys making a success for watching this. And, um, uh, for making it a success because I really appreciate it, guys. So we'll catch you all next week.